to make the citizen comments. Um, are there any citizen comments about something other than what we have on the um, on our agenda tonight? Anybody online? Okay. okay. In that case, let's move on to reports. Eric, you want to give us a manager's report, please? No, it's not the manager's. It's the manager's. It's the manager's report. Um, that too. Jeff, I got to see your microphone. Oh. Uh, just. Two brief things, uh, well, three things, I guess. One, um, this little we just last week here, uh, the fellowship we've had uh, in Woodstock. Um, so this is a fourth week. Uh, she's done a lot. Um, she's also working with us now in the water company and helping us with some financials. So it's been a great experience. She's helping with the housing with uh, Jill as well. So we're very excited, it's kind of sad to see her go. Uh, it's been a great experience for me, I think for her as well. Uh, she came in a very interesting time in Woodstock. Uh, not only with the foliage, but everything we're kind of working through. Um, so I hope she had a great time here. Um, it is foliage, uh, so we have a DPW out um, picking up trash on, on the weekends. Uh, a lot of people in town, uh, which is great. Um, I believe the police have more uh, staff on duty to kind of uh, help alleviate some of the issues we're having. Um, but I'm hearing it's more people than last year. Uh, so I hope that's true um, because that will be great for all businesses, so I'm very excited about that. Um, last, uh, water, water, water. Um, so today, uh, we're at Abracadabra in the morning. The select board had a meeting at 1 p.m. I just got back from South Woodstock. Uh, we had about six residents up there um, asking questions about um, our the town's plan acquisition of the water company. Uh, very excited with all the feedback we're getting so far. Uh, First vote is October 29th. It's a, a floor vote uh, in town hall. Uh, so again, you have to be in person to vote, but I encourage everyone to come out. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to us or attend one of the many meetings we have and we'll answer your question. Thank you. Cassie, uh, any questions for municipal manager on the manager's report? Okay, we move on to the financial report, please. I hadn't got a chance to look through this fully, so I don't have any updates per se, but if there are any questions, I'm happy to take any. I've got a question about um, grant revenue, for instance, on page two. So there's one there's one budgeted item, um, DUI enforcement, of which uh, some of it's come in. But much, much of this is historical, and I'm wondering at the purpose of this, general is to maintain historical so the ones where everything's zeroed zero out you mean yeah i mean there's so many zeros and oh. it's on other pages too but i'm just bringing this up one up as an example um i'm just looking yeah. at grants that uh happened through many years ago. yeah so i john specter's in the crowd and, and i think you'll agree this one of the goals we've had is try to eliminate a lot of these counts and we just haven't gone around to actually going through and eliminate them uh, we do want to keep them for historic purposes if there has been money received over a course of a number of years. We want to make sure we have that track somewhere. But uh, there's a lot of accounts we have that we definitely we don't use anymore that we can get rid of. Yeah, there's quite a few. But I agree that it's important to maintain this historically. For instance, when we get back to talking about mergers, I mean, I will be pointing out how many grants the village has received as its own municipality. Some of those, quite a few of these would be detailed in there, like the North Street one and many others. Um, so yeah, so they should be maintained somewhere, but you know, on other pages, there's so many zeros of things that occurred in the past. But thank you for answering that. That answers that question. I, I, I don't, I think to speak, um, you know, in half the truth, I think in the past we tried to zero out non-budget items, but then sometimes if we allocate money into a zero budget item, it may not show up on the account. So that's why we've kind of gone back to just having everything. Um, but as Robert gets more familiar with Nemeric, hopefully we can solve some of these issues. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I do have one question. Joe could probably answer this. What, what was the equipment purchases for the parking meters this year? It was, uh, it was the, some of the guts, if you will, um, you know, the, the, the functional part of the meter uh, and batteries that we had to order. Um, 
back in, I think, August to be prepared for, um, yeah, for the late summer and foliage. Um, it was not a budgeted purchase, but um, we were chasing faulty meters um, quite often. I think we have that pretty well squared away. I haven't, we haven't had any complaints um, since this. Um, so I think they're all currently. So do we have spare parts as well? We do have spare parts, um, some of them functional, some of them not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a closet full of. We have functional ones. Come we on. do have a couple functional ones, yep. Okay. So if one goes down, we should be able to put it in. Okay, thanks. Any other questions, Jeff, please? No. Nope. Audience? Uh, in that case, Joe, you can come back up. Let's move on to the police chief update, please. All right. As mentioned, it has been a very, very busy foliage. I think coning off for the vendors and the food trucks has been going uh, pretty well. Um, I think I saw a non-vendor using one of the spaces today, but I. We had them coned off. I don't think there actually were vendors today, so I think yeah. I can just take that down tonight. We won't have that out tomorrow anyway. Um, a lot of buses, been showing as many as we can, but whack a mole and you knock one down and two pop up. Um, for this coming weekend, last weekend, River Street was uh, really, really congested. Um, and in the past, for parades, we put out temporary no parking signs. Um, I don't think I'll go to the scale of when we had for parades, but um, increasing the visibility of the no parking zones by adding in some temporary signs, I think will help. Um, I'm not sure if we could have got a fire truck through there the way it was Saturday it afternoon. So I'm gonna, I think my, my working, my, it was bad. Yeah. Um, my working plan is to go around Thursday afternoon and put out some more signs in anticipation of Friday and Saturday and Sunday. That's great. Thank you. And I have authorized uh, quite a bit of overtime over over this upcoming weekend. Um, just trying to be prepared. Um, got the schedule set for Halloween for the officers that are working. Um, for, for parking revenue for September of 2024, uh, kiosks brought in 4,894 and 80 cents. Uh, meters brought in 4,730 and 50 cents. Park Mobile brought in 7,042 and 50 cents for a total of 16,667 and 80 cents. Down from September of 2023, which was 18,132 and 50 cents, but up from September 2022, that was 15,998 and 74 cents. You know, the first two weeks in September was slower than normal. They seemed very, very slow. Right. And then it just kicked, and now it's busier than yeah. I've seen in years. Yeah. So. Hopefully October will be back up, but this has been a couple months where we've, I think August and September were, were below at least one of the previous two years. Um, was there any any questions? That's really all I had prepared. The courthouse. No. Courthouse. Yep. When are they? Are they in? So there? they're they're in there now as of October first. We have the signage up. Um, I printed them some contractor parking passes. Uh, that they. Put out and collect every day for their people that are doing the work. The work is expected to take a month. Um, no idea if they're on schedule or not. Is that for the holding cell? Yes, and a, a bathroom renovation. Okay. Um, once that is complete, the court will be holding their some of the um, hearings or arraignments um, for criminal cases. In Woodstock. How many days a week do you think they'll be here? So Tuesdays is the arraignment day. So um, someone might be cited for shoplifting 
their court date isn't the next day. It's usually like six weeks or so later. Um, someone arrested overnight, um, they're going to be the next afternoon, no matter pretty much no matter what, right. um, or the next business afternoon. Um, so theoretically, any afternoon could have hearings or also probably a lot of Tuesdays. I don't know what will be handled remotely and what will be handled in person. Last question, where will their offices be? So I think the big question is the 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 who will have offices because the, the the judges and stuff I don't know if they're going to share chambers or you know have makeshift chambers, um, but the attorneys will have to you know work out of wherever they figure out. Okay. I know that's not sure. Okay, thanks. Can you figure out how everyone can fit in that building? Yeah, that'll be it'll be. A oh, small space with a lot of people, but okay. Jesse, do you have any other questions? Sorry. I do about the parking meters in front of the uh, post office. Yep. Um, I noticed that there are people parking there a lot longer than 15 minutes, especially from out of state. They are not going to the PO boxes. Yeah. And or collecting packages. Yep. They're going to get ice cream or walk through the village for at least an hour. Yep. Um, I, how do we enforce that? So. The meter, you know, the meter is 15 minutes, it expires and it gets a ticket. If the meter person, I think, observes them not using the post office, but, um, you know, they don't sit there and monitor that all day long. So I think that's certainly very exploitable um but i do know that's a fair amount of the tickets and what about raising the tickets price I, to twenty dollars at least i think for the meter violation just because of the cost of the sticker the validation stickers that we put on there that we've recently purchased a number of i would delay on that but as far as some of the other stuff the twenty dollar over or twenty dollar no parking or traffic hazard those sort of things I would definitely um, think we could increase a fair amount Great. and maybe do it in two phases where eventually for the next time that we buy the validation stickers maybe go up a little bit there. Okay. Thank oh, you. And I saw the boot. Yes, I have started. I booted two vehicles. Um, so brought in some ticket revenue with that. <laughs> they booted because they were. Negligent for multiple times? Or? Correct. Yeah, you have to um, have not paid, I think, five parking tickets. But in the two cases that we've done, it's significantly more than that. Five parking tickets would only be like 100 bucks or, you know, depending on what the tickets were. Yeah. Um, and we've got a list, and when we see more, we'll, we'll grab more. But I think it's a fair an effective way to do it. I was glad to see it. Yep. Um, and what else is going? There's lots of people. There's lots of traffic. Lots of people. Lots of traffic. Anything else that uh, that you all have been working on? Um, like no, no big pieces are jumping out at me in my mind, but I'm sure there's, you know, some people yelling in the graveyard. Yeah, people yelling in the graveyard. And outside the post office, and and he hasn't returned. No, okay. no. Okay. And a rabid fox, and a rabid fox. Mm -hmm. Quite, I think, very rabid. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Okay. Next item on our agenda, we're going to votes. Uh, the first one is the book stock twenty twenty five permit, and then we've actually got two of those to consider. So one is in your big packet, one is in your small packet. John, can you want up to the podium, please? Yeah, I apologize. I don't have, I don't think I need, I hope, but I don't have a copy of the filled in form. I asked Kitty to send you another one. And so oh, okay. if there's an extra one, or it, it doesn't matter. You can just ask me. Okay. Can you go up there just so everybody oh, right. else? Oh, I thought you meant, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Just want to make sure. Thank you. And you've got your microphone, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Bookstock, we've heard of it. 
tell us uh yeah it's what it's you're... may so bookstock it was canceled for 2024 there was a small poetry uh event um, it's back on for 2025. This year, it's going to be earlier in the season, so not peak season, May 16th through 18th. Um, so uh, we, we did a survey of just FYI of the lodging owners and merchants, and May was clearly the preferred time because they're not fully sold out. Um, we're asking for from, I think that the application may say Friday morning, but the event will be from Friday at, let's say, 12 or 1 p.m. until Sunday at about 2 or 3 p.m. Um, I think we'll need to set up on Thursday. I don't know what the normal process is for the green, but we have huge tents for books, you know, for the book sale. Um, we'll be using the whole green. And we also applied for the gore. Um, what we'd like to do is to have eating on the gore and we'd like to move the picnic tables which we'll we'll do all of this we'd like to move them from the green to the gore probably under a tent although we have the umbrellas and have local local food restaurants basically we're going to sort of set up a, a department we're going to set up sort of five stations where they will make when we've started to talk to the food vendors and the first one is interested Sort of make prepackaged food um, that we will then have volunteers selling at tables, and so you'll basically be able to see the books, you know, the bookstock cafe. But you can also obviously go to restaurants and so forth. So we're hoping maybe we'd have one food truck, and we would come to you obviously for an application for that. Um, it will be very similar physically on the green to what it was in the past. There'll be music, you know, it's it's the same. It'll be the same. Bookstock itself is going to be a smaller scale in terms of the number of sessions and so forth. There'll probably be about a, a dozen authors and three or four poets. Um, venues will be on the green, uh, in Pentangle, in the library. It might just be those three places. There'll be a movie. Uh, and the, so the, the outdoor event will probably end at about noon or one o'clock on Sunday. And then there'll be a movie about the book industry and panel discussion in, in Pentangle before we leave, before we close. We have insurance. Um, we, I think the two unusual things, of, one of which I've mentioned is moving the picnic tables to the gore. I don't think anyone's ever done that before because we didn't have the gore before. Um, the second thing is, and this I may require, I think this is unconventional, but we are trying to register. Well, Bookstock has never figured out who's coming or even frankly counted the number of people who come. That is a huge problem in terms of fundraising and keeping people apprised. And so we would like to register everyone who comes into the green. Um, they don't have to pay, everything at Bookstock is free. But what we'd like to do is have a couple of entrances and have people come in. And if they basically say, I refuse to give you my name or my phone number, we want their email address. If they won't give us that, we want their phone number. They won't give us either of those two things, we'll let them in anyway. We may not let them buy books, but we'll let them in. So we're not going to prevent someone from coming in, but we'd like to block off some of the entrances with volunteer and a little rope and just direct people to two places around the green where they could come in. Wait, okay, so tell me about, because I, I don't see a map here. Right, no, we, ha we haven't given up. Sorry, I didn't know that we needed to, we, ha we are developing a map for where the tents will be and so forth. Okay, can you tell us about where that's going to be? Where, what, where the tent? How many? Where are they going to be? Uh, I, uh, okay, I can, sorry, I didn't realize. Um, uh, there will be coming, going from east to west. This is approximate. Going from west, east, west, east to west. The first, the main entry point will be on the east side. There'll be a few 10 by 10. In, there'll be an info table, probably all of these things under a 10 by 10 tents, you know, pop-up tents. So there'll be an info table. There'll be a registration table and there'll be a volunteers table so there'll be three tents there okay. then there's will be probably two on either side of the walkways there'll be two 20 by 30 60 we need 100 there'll be there'll be about 120 or 130 linear feet of 20 foot wide tents so 60 feet on the right and 60 feet on the left 
which will have publishers and authors and exhibitor exhibitors, literary related exhibits. Then there'll be music that takes us up roughly to where the music usually is at the farmers market. Oh, so all of that, so that 120 feet for the 20 foot wide tents plus the three other tables, that's all in the east end from like the east. Correct. That gets you to the tree before the music, if I'm remembering exactly right. And then you get the music, and now now we're about halfway across. And then on the other side of that little pathway is where the book sale tent begins. And that is going to span the center walkway. It's a 30 by 60 tent. It's the same size as it's been in the past. And then at the far end, the east end, will be a, a, a smaller tent. It's going to be the soapbox where people, where, where authors will be reading 10 minute snippets of their work. So, um, so it'll be a yes, I mean a a one person, one two foot yeah stage and a, maybe a twenty by ten tent or something something that'll hold maybe thirty people or something like that. So we intend to use we intend to use the green won't be overcrowded. There's a lot of space and we're not filling it, it up, but the, but we will use effectively the whole the whole green. Mm -hmm. I mean we'd like to. The the thirty by sixty tent that has the book sale in it. Did you say that goes across the, the walkway? It'll go across the center walkway. Okay. I think it does. I mean, we could, I'm pretty sure we can fit it on one side of it. Sorry, maybe, I may be confused. I, I may, I actually, to be honest, I'm not sure. I know that in the tent, there's a, there's room for people to walk in the tent. Okay, but it's not across, like, uh, it, it's not in the center, where it, people like walk down the center. Towards the end. If. So oh, there's the gravel path that goes all the way through. Yeah, you know, it's the long, it's not towards the end, it's perpendicular to the end, it's the one I was talking about, the longest one. Yes. If there's a policy that we're not supposed to do that, then we won't, and we'll figure out how to, I think we can, I don't think that will prevent book stock from happening. Because one of the, as you know, it's keeping it open to everybody, no matter what, and so I wouldn't want to impede somebody from walking from one end to the other. Like, if there's tents on either side. Well, there wouldn't be, sorry, the, the, the the purpose of the tent covering the walkway is so that people can walk on the walkway. So it, it, we, we want people to be able to get, like we're not gonna put books there. That, that would be, we're inside the tent, there's room for people to walk, but we, yeah. But if you have volunteers there asking questions, if the average citizen just wants to walk. Right. How would you deal with that? Well, I think if you, if you tell us that the way we have to deal with it is to say, go right ahead, then we will. What? We'd like to not do that, but what you, but that's, but we want to follow the rules. So. And do you have anything else? I'm sorry. No, that's it. Those are, the, it's really the, it was the, um, the tables, the picnic tables to the gore and, and something about controlling access. And did you say you also wanted a tent on the gore? Uh, we might want to put up a tent. I think we applied for one. We might want to put up we, we're unsure whether or not we would put the picnic tables under a tent okay. or whether we'd simply just open the umbrellas. It, 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 we're debating that. And if, and if you have a concern, if you, again, I, we're, it's an early stage of, stages of planning. If you tell us that you don't want tents on the gore, I don't know if you've set a policy for that or not, then we can do it with the umbrellas. But there's some people on the team who are saying, you know what, if it's raining, the umbrellas, you know, people aren't gonna, are gonna have trouble eating. How many food vendors do you want on the gorge? We, we, the idea, what we're trying, the concept that we thought we would test out for Woodstock as well as for Bookstock was instead of getting some, ven, some local restaurant owners irritated at food trucks to say to them, and we've gone to the butcher and, and Alex was, oh, that sounds good, was to say, listen, Alex, you don't have to worry about, we'll, we'll serve your food. We'll, we'll tell you, we'll, you know, we'll serve your food. We'll take a dollar per sandwich and you get the rest. We'll give you the money. We'll get the volunteers. We'll have soda cans and, you know, and there'll be you and three others or four others lined up in a row, each one with a table and two volunteers and one cashier at the end. And so you'd. Uh, are there, are there, yeah. Um, residents here? Uh, Pete, uh, Worthy Kitchen, Pete's. I mean, we'll just, we'll open it up to Woodstock. Yeah. restaurants that's great i mean if none of them say that then we'll come back and say we need food we need food truck permits that's great 
but we thought we would start with, yeah, we thought we would. So you know the walkway from the kind of uh, across to the middle of the, from the Woodstock Inn, across to the green. You're not going to rope off the entrance there. Well, wait, until you give us permission, we're not going to rope anything off. Yeah, I'm just concerned about that because if you rope off ones where there are crosswalks, and people are like going to have to walk in the street. Yeah. I, you know, as you're describing it, if you want, basically, as you're describing it, maybe the roping off doesn't doesn't. Just, it's too much trouble. We, you'll have to, you'll have to spend a lot of time figuring out what to allow, and we'll have to spend time implementing it. So let's just yeah. assume. At a party event, it's a private party, and they were specifically told that they can't stop someone from walking. Okay. They think that we shouldn't be cutting off. I, oh, that's fine. That's fine. We'll 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 do. We will regulate. The, we'll gather as much information as we need to by not letting people buy books without registering. <laughs> okay. And that will get us eighty percent of. That will be a, our prior experience was zero. That will get us eighty percent of the way towards perfection. So that's fine. And I think looking at this, you put the full information on the green permit and the green information on the board permit. So I assume we should put all of that. Okay, sorry about that. I I did, however, pay the fee, yeah, both uh, fees. That's <laughs> the I figured that. That's fine. I just want that noted. Yes. Um, sorry about that. I. That's okay. Talk about the green one, both of them. Um, and you talked about electricity on the board. I assume, are you working with the library or is it electricity on the board? Well, uh, either, the, either with the light. Well, uh, let's see, we may not need electricity on the board. We definitely need it on the green. Okay. Um, and if we do need it on the board, we'll work either with the library or with Splendid Base. Okay. Because I think we would need, if we need it, we would need it at their end. Okay. Because I think they would be one of the vendors that would serve directly out of their, out of their window. Once they get permission to do that and the table that they need to construct. Okay. So they would be one, by the way, Jeffrey. That that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Unless by then they're in the basement of the Mountain Creamery building. Oh, it's so exciting that you're doing this job. Yeah. yeah, I think that it may not work. I mean, in which case, then food trucks become the bag. But it'd be nice to see whether or not we can. I mean, the whole book stock. Oh, book stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a great team. This, it's yeah. Friday, uh, June. June. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we moved it four weeks four weeks earlier, which I think makes a big difference to the to the lodging, certainly to the lodging folks. I mean, maybe to the retail folks. No, it'll make a difference for retail. Um, I see any questions or comments? Just hand up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can what? you come up or can, can you give us a Yeah, do you want to go? I guess. Yeah, we can just give you a I, I have a quick question. Uh, what, what are you defining as a bore? I'm just curious. Uh, it's the entire space from in front of Splendid Bay. So that, that, uh, the sidewalk in front of Splendid Base, from there all the way over to, I believe, like where the memorial is. So all of that green space is the gore. Okay. Yeah. So including the bar six eight. Yes. Thank you. Entire space. Uh, are there any other questions, or are there are there any comments online? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing is, I would really like to see uh, a map of this because it is different than what we've had in the past in terms of where tents are set up. And it's, uh, I can give you, uh, that's fine. We're happy to give you a map. We, we have a map. We have what we were told was a map of where the tents were in 2023. Okay. And it's not that, I mean. I'm oh, sorry. I think you were saying it was different than it was. Well, I mean, it may, it may be that the tent that was second was 20 by 40 instead of 20 by 30, but the general, I think we're going to have fewer tents, some slightly. Why don't we get you, we can get you a diagram of 2023 and a map of 2025, 
And if you want to make this contingent, as long as you know, if you want to make this contingent, or if you want to hold off until that, that's fine. We'll get that. We can and we can have that within a couple of weeks. So we're working on it. Do the same thing for the gore, especially since this will be the first time we're doing something of that scale on the gore. Fine. Um, it, it's not gonna. It's not a problem as long as we're still first in the queue yeah. for those dates. I see you, John. Yeah. You know, you know, I mean, as long as we don't lose this to another event, if we, if you want to defer this to your next meeting, I'll we'll we'll get those two maps to you. Safe, safe there. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay, safe. But I just don't want and not have book stack because of that. Oh yeah, no. Uh, I would be interested in seeing those just so that we can figure out the logistics, especially since we're dealing with a new use of green and use of war permit this year. Let's no problem. have all the conversations ahead of time. And then as with everything, you know, if you guys are making changes, come back to us and even if you have an improved permit, it'd be great to keep that communication open and say, hey, we're adding one tent, we're taking away five, uh, just so we can be aware of it. So keep you current with the map, basically. Yeah. And I love, thank you, that it looks like you're going to be emptying some trash. Yeah, well, I assume that there's there, if we don't empty it, then the trash won't be empty. Um, that is correct. Well, so and in the, therefore, we're going to empty it. I'm sure you read the new use of war in green, but that is um, that, the part. And then we're going to do it. Okay. Um, fantastic. So um, I would like to table it until next month until we get a fuller picture. But I will leave it up for now uh, to come in on. I'm in May a month. I don't think it, it doesn't affect us. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. And who did you choose the PO box number? Who did that? No. Okay. Thank you. So we will, Eric, can you add that to our agenda for next month? <laughs> A next item on the agenda is uh, easement for 33 Central. Do we have people here for that? Oh, on. Um, okay. Am I representing this? Is that what I'm? Yes, and I think we've got the update from Eric as well. Yeah, there's no way to do We uh, if we touch A and R to get approval, no. Uh, be reminded. Yes. Otherwise, when we brought two minutes. Sorry, we can share. Frank and I can share. Um, I think it comes down to two questions for the trustees. One, if they want to prove an easement in that location, um, and then what the terms of the easement would be if the trustees would want to um, charge any fees to offset the legal cost of it, to offset the uh, market value of that pro of that property. Or in the in the sense of that, it won't be able to use by the trustees for a number of years. Um, a, a fee for that as well, or to give it to them for free, uh, probably be the two paths you want to take. Yeah. yeah actually, do you want to give a um, sense sure. to the experts? Yeah. Um, so this is 33 Central, which is the former Mountain Creamery. Um, Eliza Laffin here and her brother now own the entire building. Um, Eliza is proposing to put a pizza restaurant where the creamery was. Um, the issue with uh, a pizzeria versus some other restaurants is the energy to keep the pizza ovens going. Um, the the stack deck pizza ovens take a large amount of electricity, and particularly because they have to be run consistently. You can't turn them off, turn them off, turn them on, and turn them off. Um, so the only economical way to do it electrically would have been three phase. The three phase that's available is a three phase that's no longer used. So if three phase was to be used on for her restaurant, every business would have to change out their three phase. And I don't think any of those businesses want to. Um, it's a it's two phases like your house, three phases I might be in an extra line. I'm not 100% sure, but it's it's more of a commercial um, level of electricity. Um, so two things on that is I don't think the, the, the businesses would want to change pay to have their three phase upgraded. And Eliza doesn't want to pay for everybody's three phase to be upgraded. So um, after all that, the, the, the only way to economically make this happen is with propane 
um, because of some code issues where the propane used to be and no longer be used because the electric panel, the electric services that used to be in the basement can no longer be there. So they have to be on the back of the building, which requires some setbacks for the propane away from the electric panel on the back of the building. So there's a, there's a little um, uh, painted island, for lack of a better term. Wait, you want to show it? Yeah. So the, uh, what we're proposing and what we hope we can do is to bury a thousand gallon propane tank in that little island. Um, also proposing to put gradient curbing around it, grass it off, put some bollards, um, because the other thing with buried propane tanks is you cannot drive over top of them, unlike gas storage, which was our initial hope, but found out through um, the provider that you can't do that. Um, so I think that's that's it. Unless I've missed something or someone has a question. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a very tight space there. Yeah. Um, and I think it's great to use it for that, but I don't quite see the bollards could can't not going to interfere with that walkway on one side. No. Not going to interfere with the parking space right. on the other side, right? No, okay. the pollard, the ballers are going to be completely within that little island. Within it, yes. But they'll be, a, it's going to be really tight. Yeah, the um, the propane tank is about fourteen feet long, and then it's about three feet wide. Yeah. And so there's plenty of room to have it buried. And we've talked with uh, Eastern Propane, who would be doing the work, um, burying the tank, um, and they said that there's there's plenty of room. So here's another question: mm -hmm. that when the Mountain Creamery use that space in there for a dumpster yes where are you going to get rid of what you need of trash wide if you look i think in the that right there yeah. if you look at the next page you'll see so within this fence would be um would be trash the wooden fence. Yeah, it would be behind a, a, a wooden fence. It would, and it would require um, more pickups than happened before because, you know, once we get the space, figure out how much space there is for the trash cans, we can figure out obviously how many trash cans we can stick in there and how often it's going to have to be emptied once the business gets up and running. Uh, it it's pretty tight. Yeah, it's tight, but it, it will fit, which is the good okay. thing. Uh, Frank, Brenda, questions, comments? I think it would make that space back there look a lot better than it already does. <laughs> I think it would be very nice. Frank? I'm more concerned about it's a public space. Mm -hmm. It's owned by the whole community. Public spaces are meant to be managed for the benefit of the general public. Even give private entities special rights over portions of these spaces to limit the public's ability to fully access or use them as intended. It's going to be the private interest and the public good. But even is granted, it can restrict the flexibility of future public use or development of the space. Public authorities may find it difficult to offer a repurpose of land due to legal agreements tied to the easement. Public owned spaces are supposed to be equally accessible to all members of the community. Events that give professional access or use to private individuals or businesses can undermine the principle of equity, leading to privatization or a resource meant for everyone. So I disagree with the proposal. Um, are there any public comments on this? No. Oh. Um, and so I'm really excited. I'm Jill Davis. I live in the village. I'm really excited that somebody's going to do something with that building. I'm really disappointed that in this day and age, we're talking about adding propane to a commercial building. And I'm really disappointed that we don't have the electricity supplies to do this properly. 
And I'd just like to add that to your list, particularly to do, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. He's so excited to add one more thing to his list. Mm -hmm. Any other public comment? Is there anything online? Mm -hmm. I have a question, and Eric, if I can go back to you. I, at the very beginning of this, you talked about was it, is there a cost to the bill? Is there, you know, is we're giving up something? Is there a cost to that? Is there, I can't remember exactly what you said. Um, sorry, a month ago now, a uh, month ago now. Um, what I think I said was that by uh, allowing the easement, you are taking that space out of future use uh, as long as the easement lasts for. Um, there's been talks about what to do mechanic streets, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I just wanted the trustees to think that like the decision right now is for the pizza place to open up and operate immediately. But I just wanted to consider that the consequences of the decision takes it out of some use a, a, as currently is. So I just want to make the trust the trustees aware of like thinking a lot like bigger. If, if you're happy with it, that's totally fine. But just knowing that that space will then be there for as long as the easement exists. And if there was a world where we had a planner and we turned mechanics into the pedestrian zone, you know, without creating an issue or not. So just, you know, things to consider. Well, you know, having observed that space for so many years, it's such a small space. I don't see how the public could be using that space for to their advantage for anything. And I think uh, allowing a food place to exist there is in the public good in this situation I'm, I'm i'm for i'm for this because i don't see that space being able to be used for anything else and, and it has it's been pointed out it actually it'll look nicer than it currently does so there'd be a plus to that if there are any expenses that we incur, incur in terms of writing up an easement legal expenses that would be the only charge i'd be in favor of is whatever legal expenses we incur and that would be it can I ask a question? How long would you want the easement for? What? I don't know. I mean, start for 10 years or something. I don't know. Okay. And then it could be renewed. Yeah. Okay. I think that would be fair. And Eric, uh, did you say you talked to the DPW about uh, clearing the snow back there? Yeah, make it a little more difficult, but they said they'd be able to manage if need be. Yeah, okay. Um, so I I mean, I, I, I like the idea of our how long it would be for. Um, I also have another concern about flammable things underground. I mean, which I know are it's it's safe, but um, if if we provide an easement, I would I would want to to find out and the player again uh, about the liability that any anything that happens to that tank in that space, it is. It's it's your responsibility. So if it leaks and gets to the water storm, I'm not saying that will happen, but like that's on you. <laughs> um, because if we're allowing our land to be used for a business, then anything that goes wrong cannot be our responsibility. And along the way, if anything, if there are any indication that something is going wrong, and I think we could probably put this in a contract, is there's a duty to let manager at the time be aware of that um and i don't know if there's any other guidelines that would go around that i'd be interested to know if there's anything else but well i, I think um depending on what the trustees are leaving we have that work with our attorney to okay. put together a potential easement and then have the easement in front of the trustees when it's ready um for feedback um if you want with that urgency. I think I'd be interested in exploring that, but not voting on anything. I, I think if there's a vote to be had, it would be to enter into a conversation with a lawyer about what that would be. Um, and as as Jeffrey said, any any lawyer conversation that that would be your expense. Um, yep. Because we need to make sure that the municipality is covered. Obviously, um, is that. Yeah, so I mean, with the trustee's permission, I can have uh, our attorneys uh, start have a conversation about next steps. Yes. Um, and when we're all in agreement, we can have our other trustees with their potential votes for review and more questions. And I think the only thing we 
reason I want to talk about assignment ahead of time is if you would agree to uh, cover legal costs regardless of the outcome of a trustee vote. So if we engage with our attorney to put together an easement and a month and our trustees decide not to approve it, then that does that if those costs are put by their client or not. So I think you and I can start that tomorrow and yeah. the trustees are okay with it. Trustees conversation. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so then our next steps will be Eric's going to put you all in touch with the lawyer, and then whenever that, that first draft is available. So now I want to change my hat from being somebody who's concerned about energy to somebody who's concerned about business. We have been reading so much, so much everywhere about how the the Building houses, building businesses is so difficult because of what we're witnessing we're right here. You're going to slow this down. You're going to slow it down by a month. We actually want her business to open. So I would ask to some, what can we do to speed up this review? Because not this one particular, but couldn't you have had this question so that the lawyers have already worked on it? Somehow, can we save some weeks and move the businesses forward? I think if we had a different, Additional staff with bandwidth that could have happened. Uh, one thing, one thing about the mind is I don't, I don't think Eliza is really close to opening. Even if we you gotta focus on the building first. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's 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 quite a time span still. When do you anticipate? Let's say this goes forward, so forth. When do you anticipate there might be a pizza pizzeria? Million dollar question. Depends on how long it takes for the building to be put together. Hopefully by the end of this year, and it will probably take a year to open. And, uh, yeah, so 2026 yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. So there's time to figure this out. Yeah. Okay. It's slowing you down. Um, the building is slowing us down. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. We've got our next steps. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. So Eric and I will. Yes. Yeah. Let me know and we'll go from there. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the West Halloween Parade, and I believe Principal Mills is on Zoom. Uh, I saw her earlier. Yep, there she is. Okay. I'm here. Sorry, I'm multitasking. That's okay. We appreciate it. Sure. Uh, Thanks for having me. Oh, sure. Sideways. Oh, am I sideways? Am I up there down? Go. Oh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you want me to speak about the parade or do um, folks yeah. already know about yeah. it? Can you tell us about it? Sure. So um, it's an annual tradition at West that our students parade around the green in costume on Halloween. Um, typically, we have the parade close to the end of the school day. So this year, we're asking for a 210 start for 250 kids um, with their teachers and families to leave West, come down South Street Parade around the green, going, I guess that is counterclockwise past the library, um, and then coming back around the green to school. And this year we have the high school band planning to join us um, to parade for the past couple of years. We've had some parent musicians um, leading us and we're going to have the high school band um, joining with that to add some more musical excitement to our parade if you will have us. Please, do you have questions? You have it all worked out, right, Joe? Yeah, I've, um, I've yeah. emailed Maggie already this year. I did have one question. Is it going to go all the way around the green or cut back into the green when you get to the covered bridge i don't I oh I right ah, i think i mean either is fine with me i just, just i think we... usually we cut it off you're right we come around and then when we get to the covered bridge we cut across the middle you're right we I don't usually so. go all the I way mean, yep. is fine with me just so we know what's going on i think so we're a younger fine. school now we've got the preschoolers yeah. i think we once we added preschool we started cutting it across the middle that's right yep perfect so, yeah we're, we're good with it okay great uh, so two ten. So what time would you start blocking things off, Joe? Or do you do like a rolling? Probably like two oh eight, because it's going to take them a little. Once you close one of 
six. It's going to take them a while to walk there anyway, so you can keep the stream going until they get to, like, the Woodstock Inn or something. And how many officers? Probably, like, four or five. You got a lot of openings on the green. Okay. Because you got to do both ends of the green. The Court Street, the Covered Bridge. So that's four right there. And then probably have some, you know, at that 106 that goes up to, to 106. So. And is that going to require overtime for officers? I've got overtime built into that day that I think covers in the afternoon that I think I think we'll be all set using um, you know the meter attendant probably Michelle I think like maybe a little bit over time but it's kind of already built in okay so you already have that coverage so you're not gonna have to bring an additional yeah I don't, I don't think so okay okay it's a wonderful tradition uh trustees do you have any questions for Maggie no Frank no Brenda Lisa are there any public comments in the room or online? Okay. Make a motion to approve. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> motion carries. Thank you, Maggie. Thank, Thank you me. so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Now we get to move to discussion. You want to do the first? Yes, please. Okay. Jill from the our trustee of public funds. Uh, is giving us an update and some recommendations. We Which have... one do you want me to do first? I'm, I've got two hats on tonight. Um, the first one we have is the Continuing Public Funds. I've got one. Yeah. Okay, so I'm the, um, the trustee of public funds for the village, and I'm, on, I'm just I'm the only person. So what we've agreed is that you and I will make decisions about where the public trust's funds are spent. So once a year, we get to have this discussion. We have 106,000 or so in um, invested for the public trust funds. There's three different ones. You have a piece of paper describing them. Um, we can make decisions tonight about how much to spend of each one and where to spend it. And two of those decisions will go through and one has to be presented at another um, village meeting with warning. Okay. So the first fund is the Frank McKenzie fund. It's a very small balance, it's just $4,121 right now. If you were to spend 5% um, of that to 8%, which is the normal that you take out of a fund that you want to go forever, um, it would be $280 that we'd be suggesting. This goes to... There are actually no rules. So if you wanted to spend the whole thing, you could. I don't believe there's any rules to stop this one. So it's your decision, but it's got to go to fireworks. But that would go to fireworks. So the problem is that the fund has got so low that 5% to 8% is kind of meaningless. So you could go higher, but then there's nothing in future years. Eric, about how much do the town spend on fireworks? Um, I think the fireworks themselves are eleven thousand. Okay. Um, and that span a couple hundred dollars. Um, and then they yeah, probably went in. I think it's like four, four, yeah, yeah, about fourteen, fifteen thousand. Could this money go towards something having to do with the fireworks? Or specifically the pyrotechnics only? Uh, the, the wording is for the purpose of continuing the exhibition of fireworks on the fourth day of July each year. That was in the will. The exhibition of fireworks, the ex word exhibition. <laughs> and does it have? So it could, like, this could go towards the band, perhaps, if that's part of the exhibition of fireworks. But we'd have to hold it on the fourth of July. It has, yeah, yes. I mean, it looks like if we have it on the fifth, then it doesn't. <laughs> uh, the original gift was for the purpose of continuing the exhibition of fireworks on the fourth day of July each year. Yeah. <laughs> Which well, it happens happens if it isn't. We so then we just the leave the fund sit there yeah. until it's on the. I mean, so. can we just hold off 
on making this decision until when yeah. people start planning fireworks. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right, next decision. Orly Whitcomb left money to be used for the civic betterment of the village of Woodstock. Um, he was hopeful that um, the sum would be used for the employment of a district nurse unless provision is otherwise made where the community has the services of a district nurse without contribution from this fund. Uh, last year, 5,200 was dispersed to help pay the village tree work caused by the Emerald Ash. I have a suggestion this time. So we have a community care coordinator. We had a community care coordinator. Um, and that community what coordinator? care coordinator. We had a community yeah. care commun coordinator. Care. Care. Ah, it's a How do you say it in American? Yes. <laughs> right. Sure. That position is um, is being re what what was got rid of and is now being recreated. Um, the Thompson Center is involved in that. Artificial Health Foundation is involved in that. I think a regular payment from the village would be a good contribution for the civic betterment. What the community care coordinator does is. Um, She's like the, the person, the social worker to whom people go to when they have big issues. That, so the hub can pay people's bills, but we can't really handle how do what does this place do? What does that place do? What does this place do? So people, particularly older people who are moving into a new stage of care can get really good advice from her. She knows her way around the system. She can really help them. And it's a community asset to make sure that we have such a person. And what is the anticipated start of, of whoever that person might be? Um, or is it still just in the planning phases? It's in the planning phases, but it could be quite soon, I believe. And that person would be assigned to the entire town of Woodstock, or is it a region? It's going to be a region, I think. I, I don't know the details of this. Okay. But it, I mean, if it's like the hub, then mo most of the hub's money goes to people in Woodstock. So mm -hmm. we're, the, we're the big, since we're the biggest population. So that's one possibility. Kind of have a question for Joe. Can you do you see this as beneficial for you and your work? Having a community care coordinator, someone who could help with some of the bigger problems. Yes, well, there's color coming. Okay. And who would who would be paying that person's bills or paying that person's side? Who who would be their employer? It's um, all of this is I can't answer these questions. Oh, okay. Okay, so but it, so it's still in the, an earlier stage then. Okay. I think we should hold off and consider think, yeah. that as one of the things we might spend money on. Right. There might be other things. So. Okay, so um, I think that will be sorted out fairly soon. Okay. All right, the last one. So the old fire station fund has a, a, nearly 50,000 in it. And this is the one that can be used for anything, but um, the village voters have to vote. So we have to warn it. Okay. So it's up to you, I think, to recommend something and then warn it, and then whoever's at this meeting can vote. Last year, we used 1800 to pay for tree work caused by the Emerald Ash Borer. This year, um, if we went with our 5 to 8%, it would be 1300 to 2000 to pay for whatever we decide. Uh, I have some ideas, but Eric, as the person who knows what things cost, we there's there's sort of that ongoing list. We've got trees, we've got sidewalks. Both of those things are expensive and might be bigger than what a thousand or two thousand dollars could address. Are there any other smaller things that almost wish list things that you're like, oh, if we just had another couple thousand dollars, we could do X in the village? Um, we get our porta potties and bustle. <laughs> um, I mean. Two thousand dollars is not a lot of money. Think of like sidewalks. You're talking thirty, four thousand uh, dollars. How about a new trash can every year? If you keep that up, updated. Well, park benches. More. Yeah, park benches. Or replacing the ones. Yeah. yeah. Those ones around the trees. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, good place. Well, yeah. the one that was just the place. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, park benches might be a good idea. Do we have? Are they all quite new though? We have a whole bunch additional of park benches. How, how much is it going to cost to? Oh, that's a good idea. If it was a thousand, two thousand, wasn't that much money to pay for the upkeep? Yeah, yeah, because we don't have a, a line at this. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, I I like that as an option. Yeah, all the trash can. I do too. We should all keep in mind that if you do want to keep the ash trees in line, it's alive. It's I think it's every two years that they have to be treated. And so we need to remember that that needs to continue to be done if we want to keep them. So we could do nothing this year and then use it like double the amount next year? Not next year. That would be just one other option for it and use it for towards the uh, ash tree protection. So it could be, say it was 4000 next year. Does that pay for anything <coughs> meaningful? Which fund are you talking? The firehouse? Or the fire station fund. So you'd have about, this is the one that you're allowed to use for anything. Sorry, I had a list of budget items on here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I mean, if you put the word something, it's not something that jumps out as a total. I mean, some of the things, and this was for a budget conversation, but cleaning, I mean, a lot of those picnic tables need to be refinished. Some of the old ones, they're all sort of janky, so those need to be refinished. You might need to replace some umbrellas. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think we have a lot of maintenance things that need to be done, whether it's teagles or anything. And if it's only a couple of thousand, I mean, I think when you had the picnic tables done this year, you only you spent what two thousand dollars to have ten done. Oh, and six, six done. Six done. It was only got quite a deal. It was something like one hundred and eighty dollars. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, we could. Refinish. But refinishing the old ones would be more time consuming. Yeah. These brand new ones were. Okay. So how about how about we since we're postponing the other decisions? Why don't we postpone this one and you you think how to spend two thousand dollars? Come on. So it's, it's meaningful. Question for the March trustability. Mm. But you can you I, but we can vote on it at like if we came up with an idea now, the people can come vote on it next month. Yes, yeah, so we have to warn it. Yeah. So the, the village meeting. Yes, but they, but this is a village meeting. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't have to wait till March. Which is the, the trustees can vote yeah. on else. No, it yeah, has to be know. everybody in the audience of a warned village meeting. So that would be a special meeting. No, these it says. So these mean the trustees don't have to ask for approval from the audience. So that's, I just want to make sure we're. Okay. It, I, determined by village voters at a duly warned regular or special village meeting. Oh, yes, that would be a special meeting. Like, uh, no, it's a regular. It's a reg regular. That means it's a normal yearly meeting. I just wondering. Oh, okay. Well, well, this is a village meeting. No, but I think it means the yearly meeting. Because that's only how many residents vote. Oh, we've been doing it wrong then. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the wrong. My assumption is that they mean that if you ask the residents to vote, it would be a special meeting where there will be four votes by the way. Well, I think I think the way you interpreted it asked is by warning it and saying there will be a vote at the meeting. Uh, I think it's worth getting day. clarification. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it was only more than 30 days at that time. Yes. Yeah. Then, then, then we'll be okay. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's, that's okay. what's been done. We're saying, we're saying the same thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Because we could technically have a special meeting. We could call it a special meeting, but if it's more than 30 days in advance, it could be yeah. a, during one of our regular meetings. Okay. okay. Well, I think it. Given it's two thousand dollars, it should be done in whichever takes less least of your time. Yes, let's not do extra. Okay. 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 So can I stay here and do the other one? Yes. All right. Okay. So changing my hats, I'm on the investment advisory committee, and the investment advisory committee would like to do two things this evening. So one is to present to you the report of how the funds did over the last twelve months, and this is the Rockefeller Endowment Fund. So the fund is now worth $2 million. Um, it went up 11% in the year. Funds are in three different places. They're with Vermont Community Loan Fund, and they're with equities and bonds in, in Vanguard Low Cost Index Funds. 
the funds have been performing uh, as they should, according because they should be following the market. The special request tonight is to ask you, and then ask the select board next week, that we'd like to propose that we change the allocation of bonds and stocks. So we've been 60% in stock and 40% in bonds. We'd like to um, suggest that we change to 75-25. And the reasons that we feel comfortable doing that are because this fund has a, such a long time horizon. If you were um, an older person and you had a shorter time horizon, you would be wanting to put more of your money into bonds and the security of bonds. But this is a long, we've been taking a very long term horizon with this and we just, we have very predictable um, disbursements from it to pay the town and village tax equivalents. So we took 84,000 from that last year. So when we talk to investment specialists, they think that this is the sort of place where you can make a change to 75, 25. And the reason that we want to do that really is because bonds have been having a really terrible performance recently. If you look at the chart, bonds are very often giving a negative return. So if we want to improve the performance of this, it feels a good risk to put more into stocks, which are performing more like the um, 6 to 8% versus the bonds, which are minus a percent. But we can't, we're just advisory, so I have to bring this to you and ask your opinion. And when would you, if, if we said yes and next week the mm. select board said yes, how long would it take to make that change? Um, so we thought we'd do it in two goes. We thought we'd do one before the election and one after the election. So we've moved some money before and some after the election. Just so that you're spreading the risk. <laughs> One way of looking at it. <laughs> the election or when there's a decision? <laughs> or yeah, before or after January 6th. Yeah, right. <laughs> See, I'm I'm fine with this because you're advisors. You've been with yeah. them for a while. You you all know what you're doing, so I don't have a problem. Do you have any uh, questions or comments on No. Nope. Eric, do you have, uh, no. are you fine with that? Yeah, I think they're doing a great job, so. I think so, yeah, you are you're doing a great Roll job. That fun. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Jill. Thank you. Okay, I'll take all the personal credit. <laughs> yeah. Take it. Uh, okay, well, uh, then I think uh, I would make a motion to uh, allow the um, investment advisory group. investment advisory group to change the allocation of the Woodstock Rockefeller Endowment Fund to 75% stock and 25% bonds. I I second. Second. Oh, you little. <laughs> oh, there's a joke here about how they beat me saying second all the time. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you, Joe. Digging into this for us. Yeah, nice job. And uh, thank the rest of the group for us, please. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is uh, Woodstock Aqueduct Company updates. Eric, do you know anything about the water company? Do you have any? Just a little bit. Um, so first, I want to thank the trustees who are putting together a letter to the editor in support um, of the town's acquisition of the water company. Um, we've been having almost daily meetings, sometimes double, sometimes triple, out in the community. Um, I'm hearing very positive things. Um, I think it's... There's two very unique perspectives from people in the town, people in the village, um, but they, they both share the same concerns that um, they want the security of Woodstock to be in the hands of Woodstock and not any private companies. Um, so it's been a very, a very inviting conversation with many people. Um, I encourage everyone to attend these meetings. We have people come a few times. Uh, we did our first happy hour last Friday at Alakuji Yacht Club, which was very successful. Um, I left a meeting with Susan Ford and Greg Fulton in the South Woodstock Fire Station earlier. Uh, we had a good channel there. Um, and just encourage people, if you see some of the listserv, uh, reach out to the select board or myself, and we can make sure that the information again is correct. Um, and so when people do vote on October 29th in person here at Town Hall at 6 p.m., uh, they'll have all the facts and make the decision they feel best is best for the community. 
but I'm happy to take any questions from the trustees of the public on it now as well. Do you have, do you have a sense of from the public on the meeting you've had so far of uh, how many people are in favor of the proposal? So it, it's hard because I, I, I feel there's this um, Woodstock nicety where um, when you show up and you talk to them and you give them an hour or two hours of your time, they leave happy and pleasant. Um, it seems they leave in favor of this. Um, I can't guarantee what's gonna happen between them. Um, what I think people do is appreciate us being out there talking to them and answering the questions and spending time to walk through all their concerns um, and then hear what they're saying and try to implement that. Um, I feel it's been a very positive conversation wherever we've been. Um, usually we have five or six people, five of them are for it with some questions or concerns. One person may have some serious concerns and it seems by the end of that hour, that one person is usually on board or more comfortable. Um, I think um, I think the, the interesting thing I'll say publicly, and, and I don't think it's a secret, is if you talk to someone in the village um, or on the, actually if anyone in the water system, they're in favor of the acquisition of the water system. When it comes to Vondell, they're kind of a little wishy-washy. When you talk to someone off the system, they're like, we need Vondell, Vondell has to be a part of this deal. And then they're kind of like, who's paying for the water system. So like it is, it's two different components at the same time. Um, but I think even in South Woodstock tonight, just talking to people, they want to be angry. They want to be upset. They want to be, uh, uh, feel that they've been, they've been trapped in a corner and there's no solution. And I think once you empathize that we're all, we all feel the same way, you know, I'm not one to advocate to do more work, um, but we feel it's in the best sense of security. So we're doing it. Um, once you let them have that anger, they come back to a place where they understand that, it's the best thing for Woodstock to own its water system. And I'm hoping on the 29th, people will come out and feel that way. Have the, uh, Eric, have people who have been uh, vocally not in favor of this on the list, sir, have they attended any of your meetings? Um, Peggy Frazier has come to uh, two or three meetings um, and she has participated uh, very well in those meetings, asked questions and we answered them and we had a good feedback. Other people have not. Um, uh, I will say people who are vocal on listserv usually are reached out to by someone individually and inviting them to attend these meetings. Um, and some do and others have not. Okay, thank you. Eric, what do you think is the biggest, is there a biggest sticking point, something that stands out for you? From, from on my side of everything? Yeah. Um, but, yeah. I wish this was done 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. This is my biggest. Working here. Uh, I think that's that's where I, I'm at is that, um, you know, I was actually at the History Center this morning when we did a tour with uh, town hall staff and some other staff members. And um, there was a document from the aqueduct from 1886 and, you know, $1,000 they, they cost to create all this stuff. Um, so I think um, the issue is just that it's in such bad shape and it the town is acquiring something that they put a lot of money into and we know that and i think the frustration we have is trying to choose what capital projects to do first and knowing that they're gonna take a long time um and knowing that we need development 10 years ago and knowing that these projects are going to take five ten ten years before we can even see development um and I wish I wish would like had the money to do everything immediately. You know, I wish we would buy it tomorrow and start having connections in the East End and bringing them down, connecting on down Route Four. And um, but it's just not financially responsible to do that immediately. So that's my sticking point. Is I wish we could do more right away. And it is frustrating to go as slow as we're going, but it's also a big burden for the residents to you know grapple with the cost. Um, and I think. We're trying to be very honest with the residents. We're trying to tell them what the costs are going to be. We're trying to break down what they're going to pay per year. Um, and they never had that before. They just got a rate in the mail. And if you were on the hydrants, the paying hydro fees, you just got your tax bill. And so you never think about these extra costs that we're telling you we're thinking about. And we're trying to be very transparent of tell a project in December, but then ongoing infrastructure uh, savings. We have to build the capital reserves. Like these are costs, it's gonna cost you money. It costs money to run a town. It costs money for a town to function. Um, and we have to make people aware of like, they look at it as like no money for, with Aqueduct and then a town asking for money. It's, it's like, no, money both sides. We're just being transparent and open with you. 
uh, and letting you know what's going to what it's going to cost to have the system, um, and then trying to explain the benefit of it after that. Thank you. Stacey, do you have any other questions about water right now? Um, so just make a pitch. Uh, we're going slow this week. Uh, I won't be at the Mark on the Green tomorrow, but I believe Laura Powell and either Greg Bourgeois and Kerry Cole will be there. Uh, but then next week, starting Tuesday, we'll be back at Abracadabra, then Montverde, then um, Soul Free Good, uh, Mark on the Green. Um, and then we'll do some more happy hours, too, once foliage kind of dies down a little bit. Are there any uh, questions from the public or online while you've got Eric talking about water? Mm -hmm. I had nothing online. Um, so of the 29th, is that, has we got already warned? Um, yes. Yes, it's like board on the 25th, signed the warning and it's been warned. Yeah, and then if, with, with a successful vote, they'll warn the second meeting uh, before November 10th for December 10th. All right. Um, Okay, thank you for the update. And um, thanks to you and Mr. Kraft and the select board. I know you guys have been doing a lot with this. So uh, I appreciate you guys communicating so well to the public. And I would encourage everybody to go online. There's so much information online. Show up at a, a meeting or a Zoom. Um, and then, you know, stop into people's stores and ask them questions. They'll get answers to you as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. Next item on the agenda is uh, a discussion sort of uh, about. Wassail weekend. Is there anybody here to talk about Wassail? Uh, Beth's online, but also I just figured that we should probably start talking about it. It's probably really one more meeting, the trustees, and then it's going to be Wassail basically. So we just kind of prepare um, water parties, traffic, control. Um, Beth can kind of go in what they're planning. I think they have some really good ideas this year, but uh, I don't want to be suspicious. We were with foliage where it's the last second and we're trying to figure out should we, do we need a porta potty? Where does it go? Um, the committee that Beth has formed already reached out to me asking if we'd have more porta parties than normal, um, uh, and if so, who could fund them. So I think there's some conversations we want to have. Um, I'm happy to open the town hall. I'll probably be here all day Saturday for a while, so, so I can open up town hall for other restrooms. Um, and if Deb Green and myself can kind of monitor that, uh, I'm happy to do that. Um, but really just, Sorry. Uh, uh, Deb Green is a more, most recent director of Entangle. Um, but I think we want to just have the trustees prepare for it coming. Uh, I know, I think the chief has his entire staff in that day to do the parade for crowd control. Um, so I think it's important for us to kind of start talking about this next month. I, I was wondering who had made a request for more talk for your party? Um, so Beth has kind of, uh, the chamber has kind of formed a committee of residents, uh, business owners to kind of plan Wassail for this year to maybe make upgrades. And they reached out asking about the possibility of having more porta potties around for Wassel. Um, the resort last year was very strict, where that you couldn't even get into the inn last year. We had people outside asking for keys. My assumption is going to do the same thing this year. They will. Um, so I think most people who know what's like sneak in there to go to the bathroom, you know, during foliage, that's not going to be an option. Um, the Welcome Center has been slammed the past two weeks. Um, I think the porta parties in the history center have not been overly used. They're getting used. But they're getting used. Um, and it's just you have this big group of people in the town for five hours at one all one time. Um, and that, I think that's an ongoing concern. My thing is is that maybe some of this could be privately funded. I don't think the village should take full responsibility for some additional porta potties. We are, you know, it, you know, it cuts in. It can be funded differently. It's not cheap, and we've already, you know, done this already. So, I, I would like to see people attempt or people look for private funding for whatever we pay, we pay. But if they want additional ones, I think they should take the responsibility for it. Um, Beth, can you uh, just remind us what's happening? There's a couple of different things this year. Can you remind us what sure. the events are? Sure. And and I just want to say I've been hesitant, but it is I don't know where your little speakers are, but it is so difficult oh, yeah. to hear you right now. Um, the whole meeting. Oh, I'm kind of like got my ear. Um, anyway, we have a great committee and have raised 
about um, un just under $10,000 to create Wassail Weekend um, in, in a much more, to hopefully be a more successful than last year. Um, new things include, um, with the help of Pentangle, we're going to have a little citizens kickoff parade on Friday night with some bells and um, tea lights walking from the East End Park to the Green, um, led by a bagpiper. And from one till seven, of course, is the artisan market under on the covered bridge and Park Street on Friday night. Um, we'll be having hot cider, et cetera, outside um, after we get to the green. And, uh, you know, horse and wagon rides on Friday, et cetera, trying to make Friday a little more festive. Saturday is the big push um, with a whole variety of um, things. We will be making providing an honorarium to the people who are bringing their horses and wagons to town as opposed to um, for the last several years, people who brought their horses had to pay an entry fee to the um, the the host, which was um, High Horses. Um, this year, we've raised funds so that we're going to be giving out Woodstock branded um, debit cards or credit cards um, for each team. Um, Two hundred dollars for the team of one to four, um, $400 for the team of uh, four plus. And what else on Saturday? Um, Saturday is is pretty well jam packed, um, including things in Pomfret, uh, um, of course, Pentango, uh, Billings Farm, um, and with the highlight of the parade, the Rotary is also um, going to try to enhance the bonfire uh, caroling on the green. We've also contracted with the Upper Valley Chordsmen, the Barbershop Quartet folks who will be doing caroling throughout the, the town on Saturday. Um, and then um, Sunday, there are horse and wagon rides, things at Pentangle, skate with Santa, cookie, cupcakes with Santa, um, the Messiah, et cetera. And um, we have put in our projected budget, I think two porta potties. Um, last year, there was a line out the door, um, mostly women, um, to use the restrooms on Saturday. Where are the, where are the, uh, border potties going that you're part of your plan? I, we don't, I don't know. Um, we haven't asked you for a place to put them. We've just talked about them on Monday with Eric and the committee. So the chamber would be financially responsible for the cost of the two porta potties. The committee. It is a partnership committee that includes the chamber, Billings Farm, private citizens, um, Pentagle. But not the village. Et cetera. What? Yeah, okay, got it. Not just the chamber. Right. Um, with the, oh, I'm sorry, did you have anything else to add? 
I don't. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions if um, I can. Yeah. So my question is just um, because you're much further along in the process, and Joe, you, I want to bring you into this conversation. How are you working on the logistics of what time the covered bridge is coming down? Is closing? How are you doing detours? What's your plan for that? Uh, we haven't met this year, but it, it'll be probably a replica of the last year. No, closing down the covered bridge because they're doing the market on Friday night. We haven't met. Oh, okay. No. So we were going to invite Joe to the next meeting, which is not next Monday, but the Monday after to discuss the beginning, the parade. My other question, Joe, is last year we... will be out of town then, so we'll have to meet up, but that's fine. Okay. My, my question was about the cadets. I thought last year we had a few cadets from Norwich. Or did I make that up? No, we did. Were they beneficial? Okay. I think so. Yeah. Any help is completely beneficial. Yeah. Um, I do have a volunteer coordinator, a volunteer volunteer coordinator for um, kind of the top five aspects of the weekend. So, and of course, crowd control is top of the list. Did remember when someone came to one of the meetings that there was concerns around keeping people far enough back because the horses were having difficulties. There is always concern, and we try. Um, people just don't understand that these big creatures can be dangerous because they look so pretty and some of them have kids on them etc and so each each team is required to have two each horse is required to have two marshals on either side that the team provides and then we through rotary and citizens and the police department and last year the cadets from norwich try to keep people back um, one of the other things that we're something we're not doing is we're not judging the parade and we're not announcing the parade so that it and and we have a music we have a band in the parade so trying to enhance the parade and not hold it up um so we've really tried to work with logistics um creating a nicer ambiance um and safety because once they stop for the announcement and they get backed up and the horses get antsy um it, it can be difficult um can you all give us an update when you meet about because this is the first year we're, we're closing the covered bridge for the market or at least since I've been here. Right. Um, and especially because we've had a we had a busy weekend and we've had some people reach out to us about how challenging that can be with people walking around the bridge and people trying to drive in there and not. And uh, it just brings up, I want to make sure that that is well signed, that people understand where you can walk and where you can't um, and how we make sure that the people on the bridge are are safe as they're selling things. Absolutely. And we definitely will I will we'll meet with excuse us. We'll meet with um the chief soon within the next two weeks and create signage um for the detour because people won't be able to go through the bridge Friday after mid noontime and Saturday. So um you know that that will definitely be a bit of a you know difference. And we will. We are still doing the, the shuttle buses, so we are providing parking at the um, at the high school, and having the smaller buses drop off on the River Street side of Mountain Avenue and then go back around. That seemed to work very well last year. Um, and again, with the closing off of the bridge, the the loading and unloading and the moving things. Um, just, I would ask that you just check in with the. The house on the corner there was at nine mountain avenue because that's their driveway 
So I want to make sure that they are not blocked. We're uh, not right. Blocked. That's one, right. We won't block the one this. that has all the apartments. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a little. I don't know if they'll be able to get out. Well, they need. I mean, we don't want to. Have, please have that conversation with them because they need to be able to get in and out or if there's times that they can't I think it's just letting them know so that if they need to make alternate accommodations they can I guess it just depends where we put the bar barricade barricade yeah. right because so there'll be no craft I mean no artisans at all on on the <laughs> river street side of the bridge it will start at the bridge itself and come south as opposed to and there'll be nothing but drop off and unloading and loading um to the north so i'm trying to understand this so you're dropping off busloads of people the center of the bridge will not be available and the only thing that will be available are the walkways on the bridge from the people who are getting dropped off to go to the parade. Am I getting that correctly? Their bus loads, the bus loads are 15 passengers. Okay, I just want to make sure I have that. Yeah. Correctly. They're, you know, we're not dropping off 50 passengers at a time on the back side of the bridge. We're okay. dropping off 15 people at a time. Um, we will keep the, you know, the <laughs> walkway clear and, um, and walk on make bridge. sure that we have good directional yeah. signs just around it's going to be a but there's going to be a whole things thing. in the way things in the way so i just want to make sure the walkways are clear so yeah people who get dropped off can get over across the bridge because it, the market will be in the center of the bridge where you normally drive not right. where people yeah. walk during right right, right. right. not yes. before yeah during the market from before until after Yes. Okay. Yes. From Friday night through Saturday night. Right. Saturday night. At, we'll be closing at four. Yeah. You'll kind of need two sets of barricades. Yes. One at Mountain and River. Yeah. And two at on the other Mountain side. and North Park. Mm -hmm. Right. I think we should post it. Plus, or... plus both ends of the bridge. And we and we certainly will be pu putting this out. On listserv, um, irregularly, we have a press release that doesn't really talk about, it talks about the parade quite a bit and the weekend, but it does not talk about um, the logistics of that yet. But okay. it is going to be an interesting experiment. I hope that it's a great success. Yeah, and I, I think just the more we can talk through the logistics. so. If the next time, if you guys had to, if you can just draw up a map that's like, we're going to put um, yes. the barriers here, here, and here, and then you've talked to Nine Mountain, and that that one that's on the other, on this side of the bridge, the Airbnb. but The yellow one? Yeah, their driveway is right there. So yeah. if there's somebody staying. Their driveway is, but he came and spoke in favor of it. The and guy that lives on North Park? Right before the bridge. No. Oh, yes. 11 North Park? Yeah. Or 11 the green, I guess it would be. Yes. Green. Is yes, the man with the yellow lab. Yeah. And he no, came he's... to your meeting and spoke in favor of it. That, he's, I thought he was 13. No, that's that, Andy. No, he's not right on. No, he's not. He's not he right was, there. I think that's someone else. He's, yeah. yeah. Oh, someone else. But, but, yeah, I think it's, I, I feel like, but the, they need to be mm -hmm. midware because they won't be able to access their driveway. And I believe it's used for Airbnbs, in which case it would. Well, I think Somebody's renting. Sounds like there's two places there. That yeah, there's enough. One. There's the one on. Well, I guess on the green, but I don't know where their parking is. And the short-term oh, rental that's behind, that's right next to them. Yeah, the one that's right next to the bridge, the driveway. That will make everyone aware of what's going to happen. So everyone to move on. Maybe in the village by the bridge can get a, a yeah, uh, right. so they know. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. How about if Joe and I will meet and 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 look at the bridge and the the that side of North Park, uh, North Park Street. Okay. Okay. Then uh, an update in, in at our next report meeting. back. Yeah. Um, and then trash wise, are you all trash. taking your trash? Do we need to? Oh, gosh. Uh, so I last know. year we had a public works on call and they came through at 
four five o'clock and it, and it was yeah. a mess on uh, friday or on, on saturday. saturday so i think we'll probably have someone on duty mm -hmm. on that saturday i um, probably just pay them all the time for the whole day so they can constantly check because what happened last year was when they came by found out at 4 4 30 happy and chilly hanging out of the trash barrel as you had happy and have drunk coffee and they got all over them as they tried to click pillar out so it might be better to have them probably do two shifts throughout the day that's great okay yep. so then that would be two people or one person doing a whole day or two people yeah okay um friday um about the, there's going to be the market that day are you expecting a lot of people on friday think trash would be an issue on the green we can you and i talk about that i'd like yeah. to think about it um i have one food vendor on friday anna's will be there friday and saturday um i i boy but why don't you um... i think i think in the afternoon it could you know once i think in the afternoon time it could be Okay, why don't um, uh, we start meeting me and Chris Barr to talk over options? Yeah, yeah. that would be wonderful. And um, do you think there needs to be extra trash cans put out? Uh, probably. Yes. Okay. And Beth, would you think that there needs to be a, a trash can closer to the bridge? Or if you just have one food vendor, you don't think that's going to be? I'm planning the food on the green. Okay. Along with the, you know, with this hot mulled cider and wassail. And the then the other vendors will be on the bridge and Mountain Avenue. And will we have will the picnic tables still be out at that point or will they have been put away for the season? They'll be put away. They'll be put away. We'll get put away in December. Okay. Yeah. So you're not anticipating them being out for people to use. No. Okay. Okay, Justice, do you have any other questions or concerns? As long as Joe is, yeah, gets what you need and can figure out the schedule. Yep. Um, I just want to say one thing. Beth and McMahon have been meeting uh, regularly, I think since probably, what, February last year? Um, yes. And there's a lot of excitement, enthusiasm over this event. I just want to thank them for all the work they've been doing, um, trying to make this something new and unique. Uh, so just thank you, Beth, and your, and your whole committee. Great. Gail, did you have a comment? <laughs> You're the only one left. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Joe, and thank you, Beth. I appreciate all the work you're putting in. It's going to be fun. Um, okay, next item is foliage updates. Let's say you've been managing a lot of that. Do you want to give us an update on foliage? Well, it's happening. <laughs> um, you know, there's there's a positive and a negative on this pilot. Um, too many to go through. Um, just that anecdotally from tour guides and from people that I speak to on buses, access to quicker food is making things so much easier. Um, and they're happy with that. Um, I've been get talking to I've been getting on buses and talking to people and and you know, one day there was no creamies available and that people were not happy about that. But um, I think that I'm going to sit down and write something. And Eric, with your permission, I can use Kitty and we can put together a report. Is that okay? And really break it down to see what the strengths and challenges were. I mean, we've had both. So, um, and then put that all together and present it at the next meeting to follow through to some other time in the future to pick it back up in like March or April. Uh, Beth has a question. I don't have a question. I just want you folks to know that there has not been one day since last Tuesday. So a full week of over a thousand people, 1400, 1300 people every day at the welcome center. And, um, I, we could use more food. I think I would love to work with Lisa and, and you folks because we just, yeah. even today, there just and, and, isn't enough food. 
Yeah, and, and we have other problems, so that we need to consider in this foliage, and that's buses not parking where they the, oh. the, And I mean, we've got One, all kinds of issues, and so I, I'll put that yeah. all together in um, yeah. in a report. Just, there's multiple. One of the issues. buses went out the yeah, we heard, mechanic heard street. Up. Yes, we know. And, and uh, it, in terms of food, at least on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, unfortunately, a number of vendors commitments and gotten permits to have not shown up. So we're, we've been short. Fortunately, there's always been someone there, there in addition. And it has been an improvement over last year. There's no question. No, it's great. And John Hires is a wonderful ambassador for the whole community because he'll also jump on buses and et cetera, you know, from seeds for seeds from, you know, he was the um, horticulture teacher. He's fabulous. Um, but it, it's just an issue in Woodstock that we would be great to be able to address. But thank you both all for your help and your, and the porta potties, you know, being able to put a sign on the welcome center. Cause I feel so guilty when I leave and there's still people wandering around i feel really guilty and i've been able to at least say the porta potties are you know at behind the chalkboard and people can at least you have that as an option um and i would say that walking around just anecdotally the trash is so much better this year it's just it used to overflow constantly and i think that uh eric and the dpw have figured out the the magic for that so i appreciate that um it's it's gotten significantly better i know that's um additional work and the rotary showed up so. yes yes we did yes to help with cleaning around the trash bags so yeah oh trash thank can. you yeah. that was great so it's, it's just i think it's just a matter of what was different what was the same you know how, did it work did it not work what were those areas what are anecdotal things people saying, you know, and just just take it from there because we just don't know the answer to that right now. But we are at significantly higher numbers this year of people coming to town. Is that just a once one year thing, or is that going to continue? Um, anyways, okay. Um, and I think uh, next month when we sort of do a, a debrief, if it's next month or or December, is we have to. There are so many people doing so many things that are well-intentioned and good, but there is, our, our communication is not great um, in terms of just trying to get everything and just and just doing our best. Uh, but I think there's a lot of miscommunication and well-intentioned people doing lots of things. And I think uh, we have to figure out who's in charge, who's paying, who's organizing, who is the point of contact, um, those sorts of things between the trustees and the select board and the EDC and the chamber and uh, all of those groups. So I think we can take all the good intentions and all the work that everybody has been doing and just and just better organize it and of course start earlier. Right. So thank you everybody who's been working so hard. Um, any other comments or questions about foliage? Next item on the agenda is the Halloween discussion. Yay, Halloween makes his favorite thing. Um, <laughs> So Halloween, um, we've been uh, working on that. We've got uh, buckets for candy for people to do donations at all of the um, Mountain Views elementary schools. Um, and then there's one, I need to give you one, Beth, for the Welcome Center. There's one downstairs. There's one over at the Village Market. Um, I need to send out an email this week to remind people to do that, but it's going in all of the newsletters. Sherry Seuss has been very helpful with contacting the principals so that uh, since we do get kids from all over the place that they are going to make, um, we're asking for donations from all of the schools um, because as Lisa has done some legwork and found out that most people on those streets, Gulf High and uh, Maple, Buy about a thousand to fifteen hundred pieces of candy with their with their own money, um, and we, between donations and the amount that the town buys, with taxpayer funds, we give each house about two hundred fifty pieces. So it really doesn't go as far as you would think when you've got seventy houses to cover. Um, so 
we certainly encourage people to make donations uh, because the people on those streets uh, didn't sign up for it, but I think a lot of them enjoy it, but they shouldn't have to go into debt <laughs> to give candy to 800 people, which is a, about the amount of people that we think that we had last year. Um, so encourage people to make donations. Um, Lisa and I are talking about how that candy gets distributed. Um, it may be a distribution. It may be because it gets complicated asking people to just, we'll have it here and people can come pick it up themselves. Um, but contributions are, are always welcome towards that. And I know Lisa's been thinking more about logistics for that night. Yeah, I think Joe, you and I should talk, but I, I think we need to strategize about where we need to place some people to help the traffic flow better. Because or people trick or treating, there's some bottles. When people come on, like, when people come on, like when people turn the corner of Maple and Golf, it gets really backed up. The, the pedestrians? Pedestrians. And it gets really backed up at the end of my street because people are turning around and it gets, there's. Well, I don't think, I mean, I don't think there's much we can do about that. They're just, well, I think, in the street. I think, well, I'm talking more volunteers, um, people that can maybe be somewhere because people don't realize when you're standing one place. How intense it is until you get involved in watching it all. You know, when you have seven, eight hundred people walk down your street in less than two hours, pretty intense. Mm -hmm. And so you you don't really see it. So I and Maple Street is ridiculously dark. There's just no lighting on Maple Street. It's those fifteen watts or whatever they are. Those, I you know what I mean by the lights yeah. on Maple Street. So I, I'm just thinking proactively what we can do to make it life easier for families and kids and the people who are doing the trick or, you know, the houses themselves. So, and Maple Street is really dark. Um, and I don't know why those light bulbs aren't more bright. Energy is different, I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, anyways, I'll talk to you about it. I just have an idea about how to help a little bit with the crowd, and then we have the problem with people drinking, which is like yeah, with, yeah, which is people go to pre parties with their kids and drink, and then walk on the street with drinks, which is fun. Um, we have people who bring dogs, so we have you know me and dogs and crowds. Um, so we have a bunch of things that are going on that I think we just need to be because like you're like we know there's too many people. And so a lot of people and I mean, what's stock specialty lately is too many people and not enough space. So yeah, and it's true. <laughs> that's true. But anyways, I'm trying to figure out ways to make it easier on the people who live there, keep everyone safe, you yeah. know, and try to figure out what to do about that. Uh, anything else on Halloween? Question? Anybody online? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the STR update. So at our last meeting, we talked about that the short-term rental ordinance that was passed by the village, um, because it was not passed by the town, needed to be uh, edited really just for logistics, nothing substantial. Uh, because it said village and town, and obviously this is, since it did not pass in the town, it's, we needed to take the word town and select word out most of these places. Um, so I've gone through and really made those changes um, and then uh, passed it on to uh, Eric, um, and he has taken a look at it, and I believe Stephanie took a look at it because she had been working on that prior. She is obviously not in zoning anymore, uh, but she was nice enough to do that. So. You'll see the changes are in blue and uh, red. So today is look through them. Is that okay? You have questions about why the changes were made. Um, and again, this is really not to do anything substantial. This is just a cleanup so that it pertains to the village and not the town. Well, you guys did a good job, I think. I agree. Where do we stand on the 55-55? That that still has not changed here. We discussed, I think, two meetings ago about 
offering that number because that was reflective of both town and village, not 100% in the bill. Uh, I think I think that's a it's a discussion worth having. Um, my opinion on this, and and I'm willing to listen to entertain other opinions. Is this first run is is to not do anything. It is literally just to clean it up, because that needs to be a discussion where that's a broader discussion. And so if we decide that that's one a discussion we want to have, which is fine. That is, I think, a longer, more intensive, more in depth conversation. We need data, those sorts of things. So this is just meant to be clean up and then a second piece can be if we want to address that we can have that conversation okay. but that way we can ensure that it it's correct <laughs> any other no. Derek do you happen to know how many people have signed up uh we're having issues with that being short staffed um my understanding is there's only been a few who have actually registered I think um I checked last week's only three or four people who had applied through the software. Um, we did extend the deadline through October just because we couldn't get back to everyone on time. Uh, but everyone should have received a phone call late last week who had not registered yet to encourage them to register and let them know that they would be getting another email through WS. Okay. Um, and of course that first round was just People that had had it before. Yeah, that's correct. And so November first is when it opens up to yes anybody. Brandon, you seen you did not get a phone call. Okay. I haven't gotten a phone call and, or any email. Well, let me take care of them. So our options right now are to vote on these changes, um, which would be updating the ordinance. We can vote on that today. We can choose to vote on it later. Um, but this vote would mean that that kicks in that that same process again where i believe we have to post it within 14 days there is the 44 45 day period where somebody can contest it and ask for a, a public vote but after 60 days it goes into effect so if we pass this today then it would mean it would go into effect roughly december 8th I think we can pass it today with the, with the corrections that you, you've made um, to delay it further makes no sense. Okay. Brenda, Frank? Uh, I agree. We should yeah. move forward and have plan to alter the, the text that we move on. I agree. Eric, do you have any hesitation about passing this version? No, I mean, if anyone petitioned it and called a special meeting or going to happen is we just have an ordinance with a lot of the ordinance in the town. So yeah. uh, this ordinance is already in effect and the changes have been in effect for the village. So there's no real change here as editing. Mm -hmm. okay. so I make a motion that we approve the, the changes that were made. I second it. Okay. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. So what's the process again? You have to warn it. So it gets warned. It has to be posted publicly. I believe Stephanie said today in five places within 14 days. Yeah. Don't quote me on all that. And then there's a they have 30 days to file a petition. Um, and then if they don't, six days will go into effect. Thank you. What is that? Okay. Uh, so that's the SDR. Um, thank you all. Uh, the next is uh the beginning discussion and this is in anticipation these next two items are in anticipation of the fact that we are going to start budget conversations soon uh eric i believe your your team is starting to put together numbers is that correct they've put together the outline for the department heads okay um and so as we remember last year we did it a little bit differently where we were starting earlier we were trying to get more information the department heads came and the process is going to be they're going to tell us what they need and then we go through that? Yeah, the goal is to kind of change it to zero sum budgeting where um, our heads have to kind of justify the budget line instead of just having it be, I've got the same amount for the last five years. Um, so A, they have to kind of come in and, and say why they need it, but also they're then allowed to create their own budget and advocate for that. Um, and so it is a, in a format where 
when something needs to get cut, it's very clear what is being cut and what the consequences of the cut means, rather than just saying, we need to cut $20,000, you know, what can we do? Um, so it's, it's a, a way to try to have a budget that's a little more um, in line with what we think we need to run the municipality. So uh, with that said, um, we've obviously had lots of conversations about who pays for what <laughs> recently. Um, so some things that I wanted to at least get us to start thinking about is uh, our park maintenance plan, the things that we, as Eric brought up e, uh, earlier, Teagle's Landing, we do not have a plan to pay to do maintenance uh, for that. We don't have a plan to um, deal with our infrastructure, like the, the picnic tables and the benches and all those sorts of things in terms of cleaning them and, uh, you know, refinishing them and making sure that they're working appropriately and not covered in gunk. Um, we've got a lot of those things. And so this will be conversations that we need to have with the select board as well. Um, because as we were having the, our, our discussions with the EDC and with the select board over, over foliage items, that's sort of the conversation of, okay, so who who does pay for extra trash? Is that the village or is that the town? Who pays for um, helping the food trucks get to where they need to be? Is that the village? Is that the town? Who pays for cleaning trash cans? Who pays for extra police to be monitoring the, the, the parking in the village? Is that the village or the town? All of these sorts of things that we've just sort of done, we've never attached a dollar amount to a lot of them and we've never attached uh, who is responsible um, and whether that's a, a staff person, we need to say, does that person have the bandwidth or if it has to be a volunteer or a trustee or a select board member, um, we need to lay that out. So I would love it if the trustees could start making sort of those lists. I've got one on my phone of what are the things that we do every year, porta potties for foliage, extra cleanings, extra police. Let's Let's put that in our budget now so that next year we don't say, oh shoot, we need overtime. Oh shoot, we need DPW needs to pick up trash. All these things, we know that they happen every year. Let's budget for them and decide who's paying for them. And if we need to increase our budget to do that, then that's what we need to do. Um, so let's start thinking about, about that. Yeah, I'd also like to think about getting more on a rotating schedule. Like if we have to do picnic tables, do we do six th this year? And six next year and how do we judge when to paint the railings and you know some money we aren't just saying okay we need ten thousand dollars to do this can we do that in three separate years like we do in our houses you know and um replacing trash cans and we need a i don't know how to i don't know how to budget this but i know we um i wanted to ask about the cost of electricity to the gore how green. Cost to have electricity on the gore? The gore, not the green. Oh, to put it in, to install that. Okay. That's kind of like a question because a lot of not, we had to move all the not for profits over to the green because there's no electricity on the yep. gore. So it, that's a question that I have. I don't know, maybe, I don't know if you look at that or who does, Eric. Yeah, we have to get a quote for that from a contractor. Okay. And then, of course, with all those things, how does that fit into the goals that we've already started doing? We've we're obviously everybody's in the thick of water, sewer, you know, all these things are gonna are gonna come up. And even once we get through the water, whatever the votes end up being, then we have to start running a water company, <laughs> which is no small feat. Um, so we wanna make sure that what we're doing is in line with these goals, is in line with the money and the staff and the bandwidth and the volunteers that we have. Um, and not just expecting things to happen, but saying who's gonna do it, how much is gonna cost, who's gonna pay. Um, and being very transparent with the community about that. And if we need to do more things, that we need to pay more. And if we don't want to do that, then we do less. And that's got to be okay. When are we starting the budget? Uh, ideally two weeks ago. Um, so hopefully soon. We just got to uh, wrap those out for the last few days, and that kind of set us back. But we'll sound to the department heads probably by the end of this week and give them two weeks or so to go through the budgets. So Do we have a joint meeting? Well, November, we're likely to. Yeah, by November, you have something in front of you. Okay. Yeah. Are you anticipating doing the, the joint meetings as we did last year? Okay. And do we have another goals meeting that we need to do? Uh, I got to check with the key to see what the 
results of the poll where it was. Oh, that's right. Okay, I forgot about that. Thank you. Birding cats. No one can hear Okay. Um, does anybody have any other comments or questions about our, our budgets or the maintenance, yeah. all those sorts of things? Public. <laughs> public, yes. Yes, our public. Okay. Uh, in that case, is there any other uh, business? No one? No. Uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, our new tradition is our new modus operandi is giving corrections for minutes to Kitty early so she can update things. Were there any minutes? Were there any uh, I found, edits? I found no okay. corrections. What? Right. Wow. Oh, yeah. Congrats, Kitty. I that know. Is, She's getting it, it done. Is, Jeffrey. I think the system had like five people check it before we submit it, so we're making sure that There you go. I'm in the, yeah. <laughs> Taking away all your fun. So okay. You did say manager. The manager. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I would make a motion to approve the minutes from September 27th. He said second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, and I would make a motion to adjourn at 837. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everybody.